We all love nails, their structure, design, and technique, but there's also lots to talk about. Like beginner struggles? Yes, and what to look for in a great nail salon. Here's Elizabeth from the Nail Hub, and I'm Susie. Let's get started. So Liz and I wanted to get together and chat about the nail business. So we got some tea, some comfy chairs, and we had some great questions from some viewers that we solicited just yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So on my Instagram, viewers posted questions and we are so impressed. They're absolutely sophisticated and diverse questions that we want to address today. So get me glasses. And one great question that we have from It's Brittany. She says, what's the best way to go about finding a good nail tech in your area? It really sucks paying $80 for them and then being a mess. This seems to be shared by a lot of people who are very interested. That's a really good question. Yeah. So what yeah. are your thoughts? Well, I think one of the best ways to find good salons is to utilize social media. I know mm -hmm. the traditional routes used to be just look something up on Google, look for a you know, nail salon near me. But also using hashtags for your local city with salon on the end really helps to, to highlight some of the photos from local salons. And you can kind of yeah. test their work before you book an appointment. And I think also word of mouth and your girlfriends. Your girlfriends have a tap on Absolutely. that industry big time. I also think that when you find a salon you're interested in, maybe you don't have a girlfriend to give you a word of mouth or a, a suggestion about it, mm -hmm. go get one nail done. Check them out. Oh, that's a yeah, cool thing. They should do it maybe for free. If not, it's like five bucks or something. But get it done. Check out their whole facility. Check out their atmosphere, their attitude, how they do it. Yeah. And then before you go get the rest of them, you'll know. Yeah. yeah. I think you can tell a lot of the energy when you walk in. I totally agree. How do you do someone else's nails? This is a great tech question. How do you do someone else's nails without ruining your own? <laughs> that's great. This is from Zoe K Zill. Well, she's probably wearing nail polish. Yes. And the invention of gel polish for nail technicians is genius. Yeah. I also, um, I'm pretty, you know, I get in there mm -hmm. and I will cut my fingers sometimes because I use my fingers as a shield, which is, I'm not advising to do that. It's probably a bad idea. So I have learned to find these little vet wraps. Have you ever heard oh, of these? Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't stick to your skin, but they stick to itself. They're meant for animals for fur. Mm -hmm. You can find them at a drugstore. That's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, I usually wear gloves. Great. You wear gloves. Okay. I'm a glove girl. Yeah. I wear gloves all the time. Do you not um, file through it sometimes? Sometimes I do, yeah. but it helps protect my own nails. Because even if you have artificial nails, it's not just nail polish. I scratch up my nails just yeah. working on other people. Yeah, It's you just part for the course. Yeah, it's very true. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting one. Does oh, this it, is a long one. Yeah, this is a long one. Wow. This is from, oh, I don't even know how to pronounce that one. Unas gringas. Oh. Dabate. Apparently she does. Does it happen to you guys... When you have a client coming back with nails that entirely pop off, I'm curious to know if it does happen to super pros like you two, Aww. because I'm new in the business. And when it happens to me, I feel hopeless and I feel like it's the end of the world and I don't know what to do. If this actually happens, I guess I feel better about myself to know what we're doing, but it would depend on the answer. Also, if this already happened to you, do you charge for it? Mm. Or do you give a discount because you blame yourself? Thanks so much. I love you both. Oh, my gosh. That's a really, really it good question. It is a good question. Well, um, as someone who's only been a nail tech for six years, I it's not that long ago that I was having these issues, yeah. right? I mean, I feel like every nail tech goes through the phase where they're struggling to mm -hmm. provide quality in their services. And it's yeah. just because there's a lot going on. Yeah. you know, And it makes your heart sink when something like that happens. Of course. I feel that... When you do a client's nails, when they come back to you, you take a good look at it and try to really be true to yourself and honest with yourself and examine why it broke. Mm -hmm. And if you truly had something to do with it, maybe you didn't prep it properly, um, you need to acknowledge that. Because if you can't acknowledge it, you can't really learn and move forward. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like they dropped a suitcase on it, you know, something's yeah. got to break. It's yeah, going to break. Absolutely. But if you feel there's something you did, like maybe you look at it and there's structure that you missed or the side was thin, so it did crack there and then mm -hmm. it broke. Then you can say to them, oh, you know what? Let me just take care of that and yeah. help you out and fix yeah. it. And it depends also to try to examine who they are as a client. If they're really emotional about it, if they're really upset, you know, you want to kind of make them feel better and make them feel the warm and fuzzy yeah. so they will Diffuse return. the situation. Yeah. Yeah. So I, depending on how much I like the client and how respectful they are and they seem like they're a really good client, I would probably do that first time mm -hmm. round for free. Mm -hmm. And like I say, learn from my mistakes and, and it shouldn't happen again. And the other thing too is sometimes, I mean, 
I, I used to have a 72 hour policy because usually, mm. especially with gel, not so much with acrylic, but with gel, a lot can happen within the first 72 hours if it's not cured properly. Right. So if it's going to bubble, it's going to peel, it's going to pop right. off. Usually if it's something that actually happened because the nail tech didn't do their job correctly, yeah. it happens within the first 72 hours mm. of the appointment. Interesting. So that's a good way if you're a gel person to identify, hey, was it because it wasn't cured? I didn't apply it properly. If it's after 72 hours, it's probably due to the client doing something, mm -hmm. maybe using their hands like tools. Mm -hmm. um, and I do know some clients, I think... I think just out of, you know, not knowing what the cause of the problem is, will tell you my nails just fell off or my nails just popped off mm -hmm. magically. And half the time, that's not really the case. Mm -hmm. And so, you can sort of tell. I mean, if there's a little bit of residue there. You can yeah, see that it came off. Yeah, if you see it pulled, you know, if someone yeah. pulled and you see the, the missing layers mm -hmm. of nail plate. But that comes so, with experience. It you does. may not know that in the beginning. Yeah. So, but if I'm trying to build a clientele, I really want to build a clientele and I'm going to get on their good side. Yeah. I will fix it and it, I will do it at my cost. Absolutely. I, I used to do free fixes, especially if it was something that happened shortly after the appointment. But if someone contacts you 10 days after their last appointment and says, I broke a nail, will you fix it for free? No. Yeah. And again, I would actually look and see if I had something to do with the fix, then I would. I also had a policy that if you phone me by about 11 mm -hmm. or noon that day, I would do my very best, like 99% of the time, to get you in that day. Yeah. I but do you charge for it if it's like two no. weeks after? Um, I probably wouldn't. Really? Yeah. You're a it's lot nicer of, than I am. Probably, but that's, <laughs> you're financially very smart, but maybe that's not a good business financial decision, but it goes a long way in the relationship. Well, yeah, and it depends mm -hmm. on the client. Yeah, right? it does. Yeah. If it's somebody that's, you know, you haven't seen and it's a new client and or she's not rude. coming back or she's rude. No. Yeah. <laughs> but Charge if, your top dollar. Yeah. If you really got a great connection with them as of a course. client and you want to. And if it's a longstanding client, absolutely. Yeah. People who stick with you over time deserve extra yeah. customer service. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. And that's how I built my clientele is, you know. Yeah. Do you have any most difficult client ever stories or any stories about times you messed up when you first started? Oh, my God. Where that is start? by uh, Rose is my middle name. Oh, that's cute. That is Rose cute. is my middle name. Do you have any worse client stories? Well, I have some crazy oh, stories. I have a few. I've had clients show up drunk. Yeah. Or on something. Yeah. I don't know what they were on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've had a couple of clients. That I think the biggest nightmare clients for me are the ones that want to take control of the appointment. I've had people pick oh, up my tools. That just reminds me. Try and me. nip their own cuticles. Yeah. Use my e. I've had a lady try to use my e file because she didn't like the way that I was shortening her nails. And those to me are the nightmares. Yeah. You know, um, and and I encourage a client if she if she sees something crooked and maybe I missed it. You know, I wasn't paying attention. I don't mind if she just and I you know catch her. And it's a funny little thing between us. Yeah. But I actually had a client. This is my worst. One of my worst clients. She literally ripped the file out of my hand as I was filing it because she asked me to. She hated all the nail technicians and. Somebody gave her my name. And Is she still alive? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't get be you. after doing that with me. <laughs> yeah. So she, I mean, the first reaction when someone does it, she told me, do not file my sides. Oh. It's really hard to do a nail and not file the sides. That's like a hairdresser. She must have been cut before or something. Possibly. Maybe. No, she liked to fix the sides herself. She oh. felt she was the pro at the side. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. So she hmm. was, um, she told me not to, it's like a hairdresser. Um, not, never, don't um, cut my hair, but don't comb it first. It's, yeah, it's, that's that's really strange. So, and it's a natural, we just do. We just are automatic. So I accidentally hit the side and she grabbed it out of my hand. And I'm just like, you know, it's like adrenaline oh shot through gosh. your body. You're just like shocked, right? Yeah. And I just thought, how rude. And um, that was, I never did her. Yeah, it really throws you out of your element when you mm -hmm. get one of those crazy clients, yeah. especially but when that, you're first starting out. It's really hard. You start sweating through your shirt. You get mm -hmm. nervous. You want to make them happy because I think all nail techs are people pleasers. You know we what I mean? We are, like to care for people. Mm -hmm. We want to make them happy. Yeah, but I, you know, I handled that. She was a type of person that phoned somebody that I know looking for uh, nail technicians. And she was complaining that all the nail technicians in this town were terrible. Oh. So someone said, well, have you tried Sue? Oh, yeah, I lost her number kind of thing. So mm. she came back to me. And when I did her nails, when that moment happened... I didn't want to get on her radar, so I didn't tell her, look, you have to leave. I'm not doing your nails anymore. Right. I just finished them. And the next time she came back, I just omitted the primer. Oh. So. So good luck they, with those. They probably <laughs> lifted a little, maybe. <laughs> and she never returned. That's, but, a, that's a via con Dios. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But then she didn't go around saying, I'm so horrible because I told her to get out. She just didn't return, and, and I'm under the heading of all the nail technicians in this town are terrible. So. That's wow. Yeah. I just didn't want to get into a fight. I don't want to be confrontational. I think most clients 
have good intentions, but there's those few that yeah. I think just yeah. I, and you don't come across that very often, which is yeah. which is really nice. But don't feel don't. bad; it happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. It really does. I lost my spot. I hit the thing. So this is a really great question, and my heart broke a little for this mm. one. Uh, Lina, Lina, Na, Nadina, Lina, Na, Na, Oh, Lina Nadine C. I think, or mm. Lina Nadine Nick. We'll put something? it up there. Yeah. Why am I fifty thousand steps behind all the other nail ticks I went to school? Oh with? no. Why is something I love so much so hard for me? Does that mean it's not for me? or I can't do it. Oh, sweetie. That makes me feel really bad. Yeah, it does because it's you're probably not as bad as you think yeah, because you're probably being hard on yourself, which is why you're asking the question. Um, and confidence is one of the biggest issues I find in the industry that we all suffer with, whether we've been in it for two days mm -hmm. or, you know, two decades. Yeah. Um, so my advice to you would probably be, first of all, take the pressure off yourself. This is a creative field. When you go in to do a pottery or a painting, you're not want to put yourself on a deadline to try to keep right. up with everybody in the class. Right. This is art. It comes from your heart. You want to create and you want to give yourself time to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think take the pressure off yourself, first of all, right away. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think um, I think these days, especially with social media and pictures that are photoshopped within an inch of their life and filters and all these things, yeah. it's so easy to get really stuck in comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. Everyone has their own journey in this industry, so try not to compare yourself to someone else and practice. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. practicing is the best way to do it. Yeah. And I think one of the hugest things you have that many don't, which is passion. And passion goes a long way, sweetie. So I agree. Yeah. I mean, she's got a lot of heart. Yeah, that was a yeah. um, really sweet comment. Okay. And this is a really great question from Moran. Miranda Lynn Ellis. What question should I ask the nail salon before booking a nail appointment? I have been to so many salons that will rip off the acrylic instead of soaking it off. Ooh. Of course, it's frustrating since I know it's not the proper way to remove them. No, you're right. That is not the proper way to remove them. Yeah. Um, what are the questions you should ask a nail salon? Mm. We're really looking at it from your guys' point of view as the nail uh, client looking for a nail technician. So experience, you want to find out how much experience the nail technician has. And again, I think people can talk all they want about their skills and what they do, mm -hmm. but it really speaks for themselves when you see the work. So I would still go back to that, get one nail done. Yeah, get one nail. It speaks volumes. I always review pictures and reviews of a business before I visit. Yeah, I'm just one of those online reviewer, deep dive right. kind of people. Yeah. I always do like reconnaissance mm -hmm. on someone's business before I go. And that is a form of modern day social media referrals. So yeah, because I it used to be you asked your neighbor, right? It used yeah. to be, hey, you know, where do you get your nails done? Do you like yeah. them? Nowadays, a lot of people don't even know their neighbor. Yeah. So they use social media for that, like Yelp or Google or Instagram or whatever. Yeah. But um, I also, just because of the questions I used to get asked at, at my salon, a lot of uh, clients used to ask me about the products that we use, what kind of services we provided. And a lot of times you can tell if they use words like drill or they use words like full sets or, or sometimes there's a certain lingo, like if people actually have kind of a specialized way that they say they specialize in something, we specialize in artificial enhancements, we specialize in you know custom designs. Sometimes that kind of can show you that there's something a little bit more to that place right. rather than maybe more of a factory line salon mm -hmm. that really doesn't care. Um, and also maybe if they spend a little bit more time on the phone explaining with you what the service is, if they are literally like make an appointment or I'm hanging up on you, then that also gives you some insight into mm -hmm. the whole situation. Yeah, no, I think that's that's good advice. So here's a great question from Bella for less. Yes, Bella yes. for less. Yep. Advice for nail students about the time that it takes to do a full set, the struggles and insecurities happen, what to invest and what to hold on purchasing. Oh, that's a good that one. Means, yeah. Oh, that's one of my favorite topics. Okay. About being too hard on yourself, about keeping an eye on your costs and know your costs so you can make it in this career. Oh, that's yeah. a really good question. So I'm going to take this. Um, how long does it take to do the full sets and mm -hmm. the insecurities and what to invest? So when you're first learning and you're doing clients, you're always trying to think of doing it faster because you're trying to keep up with everybody. But learn how to do your craft good before you learn how to do it faster. I think that's that's a really very, good point. Very important. The second one she asked here was, what products do I invest in? 
Well, you could spend a bit of money. It doesn't take too much when you just start with your base products mm -hmm. and your tools, but when you're starting to buy the accessories, like all your nail polishes and your gel polishes mm -hmm. and your different colored acrylics, for gel polishes, start with your basic colors, your black, your white, your Absolutely. rose, pink. primaries. Yeah, the red when the Christmas is coming and add some gold and silver when those seasons come around. And maybe when February comes around, you add some extra pinks and stuff for um, Valentine's. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, 12 months later, you've collected a whole season's worth of nails. Absolutely. And you are an expert in a financial and about being too hard on yourself, keeping an eye on your costs and know your costs so you can make it in this career. Mm -hmm. It's really great for beginning. That is really what do you great. say about that? Well, I could talk for hours yeah, about this topic. Yeah, she can. <laughs> <laughs> but to boil it down, everything that you use in an appointment has a price to it. And so you have to take that into consideration when you're thinking about how much you're going to charge the client and how much money you're really making on the service. So one of the biggest mistakes that I see that a lot of nail techs do is they buy the whole kit and caboodle from day one and they don't actually have the pricing structure in mind to realize that every glitter, every gel polish, every crystal that you buy has a price tag on it and you've got to cover that price when you're doing the actual service. So really try to keep things simple. It's going to make your life a lot easier. And like Susie says, as you progress through your career, you can always buy more colors. They're going to be there for years to come. They'll wait for you. Start with the really basic stuff and that'll really make sure that you're making a profit from day one. You're going to love this question. So Michael Gustavus asks a great question. This is a charged question for you and I. Oh, no. What's something you feel needs to change in this industry? Ooh. Hang on to things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Liz and I really feel quite the same about this. Yes, we're very passionate. Yeah, we're very passionate about it. And, and I'm I think, really opinionated. Mm -hmm, yeah. She is. And I think our channel speak for that. And that is, we feel everybody has the right to be in the industry. So we share our information on YouTube and Instagram, all social media. Mm -hmm. So everybody can have a part of it, whether you're licensed or not. I agree. Licensing doesn't exist everywhere. So for me... I mean, as someone who started my passion playing around with nails unprofessionally, just buying stuff and doing my own nails and doing family members' nails and learning from YouTube and some great channels that I started with way back when, I really enjoy collaborating with people like Susie and sharing our knowledge. And nails are so fun. There should be no rules or barriers to entry. It's art. It's expression. So why should there be limits on who can partake? Yes. And what I've learned after traveling down to the States to some of the trade shows, I've met a lot of people and I've learned in the past few years through the channel that we have really blurred the line between professional and non-professional. I have met so many people that didn't have a license at all and they are so incredibly talented. Absolutely. And I've met people who had licenses are terribly talented. And I've met people who have licenses and don't have licenses mm -hmm. that, you know, could use a little work. Right. So the line between professional is really quite blurred, in my opinion. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I think also with the advent of technology, we're getting to a point where information is accessible to everyone. So a lot of the stuff that we had in place back in the 80s and 90s or even 10 years ago isn't really relevant. So my biggest thing is I think it's time to review the way things are. Mm -hmm. And not just keep trucking forward because that's the way it's always been done. <laughs> yeah. Right? Maybe it's time for new things. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's time for new things. I think it's always good to share. And like Leonard Nimoy, one of my favorite quotes from Leonard Nimoy She's is, a nerd. And that's The more you right share, there. the more we have. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. seriously, yeah. I just, I don't understand all the protectionism. And the new phrase, sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. That we Absolutely. have proven that. Liz brings up a very good point. But we do want to stress that wherever you live, if you have rules and regulations, we don't want you to break those rules or any protocol. You still have to follow those because that's the standing rule as it is now. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here's a great question after following that loaded question. <laughs> Unicorn or mermaid? This is by Ooh. <laughs> she in... She, she in no what the she she nailed edit she nailed it she, <laughs> she nailed it she nailed it okay or some, I think okay so she unicorn or mermaid now she's talking chrome I am mermaid all the See, way I'm unicorn really I'm all magical whimsical unicorn well I love unicorns but their mermaid is so angelic and so. Butterfly wing. Yeah, and, and see, I like unicorns because they're awkward and weird <laughs> and mystical at the same time. 
And sometimes okay. they poop glitter, which, I mean, <laughs> it's awesome. I guess I'm more your chubby fairy godmother type. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good with that. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, this was a really great question. Baby No Face? Uh, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Baby No Face. Hello, Susie. Fellow nail tech here. I was wondering if you could solve a problem for me. I always use clean tools and I always properly sanitize and a clean workspace. I use Builder Gel on my nails, but on one of my nails, it developed a small green spot. Mm. It doesn't smell. It doesn't look dangerous, but it doesn't look normal. Mm -hmm. I'm super clean, but I'm wondering how can this happen? What am I doing wrong? Should I be concerned? Ah, Great question. I know what this See, is. See, now, I will say I am a nail tech, and I've seen this a few times, and I know how it happens, and I know how to take care of it, but mm -hmm. I don't know the technical name, so go for it. Yeah. Enter a nerd. Yeah. It's called Pseudomonas. It's a bacterial infection on your nail plate, and it can happen from bacteria that was on your nail plate before you put your product on, or it can also happen from lifting and water and nasty stuff gets in there. Um, it's not dangerous. That's really important for people to know. And it doesn't smell and it doesn't hurt. No, it's just unsightly. And Horrible. the best thing you can do is take off your enhancements, allow your nail to get exposed to oxygen because oxygen kills pseudomonobacteria. And you clean it and you can apply a nail again if you can remove most of it or clean up most of it. But if it is yeah. heavy in color, like a green blue and it's getting mm -hmm. to the, no, don't do nothing. Don't touch you it. You need to leave that baby alone. Yes. Um, I want to interject something here that is a bit of an issue. We have the dipping systems out there. Yes. And they are full color. Yeah. And this can happen with acrylic too, if you're putting on full color liquid and powder. Absolutely. If you're putting a full color on your nail, and you are not straight checking it. Straight on the it. nail bed. Straight on the nail yep. bed. Straight on the nail bed with no clear base. With no clear base. Mm -hmm. And even if you did put a clear base, if there's a bubble under there mm -hmm. from moisture from your natural nail plate that has come up and risen up through your natural nail plate, because we are organic, sometimes we have a little oil. Oh, yeah. We have yeast. We have bacteria. Mm -hmm. We have oil. We have all <clears throat> kinds of stuff. So with us. the dipping systems, it is actually covering the nail. And if you are not taking that down, Every single time as a nail technician or as a client, if it's not coming down every time to your national nail bed, yep. you can't see that. You could go months and months and it's, they're just putting new product on top yep. and they wouldn't be able to see what's happening in there. Yep. And if that's the case, this problem can grow and mm -hmm. it can eat right through your natural nail, all the layers and destroy the nail plate. It will grow back because it's not damaging the matrix, but it could get nasty. Yeah. And if it is a severe, I mean, it sounds like this isn't a severe infection, but if it is... I really recommend that if you have a client like this, do not work on them. Send them to a doctor because even if you can fix it yourself, these days with liability issues, it's better for them to see a professional. And then once they get the A-OK -okay from their doctor, they can come back and continue to get services. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So from Mutter, electric drill suggestions for beginners. Mm -hmm. Well, number one suggestion I have to tell you right out of the gate is work on a low speed and do not use a serious carbide bit on that natural nail plate. Yeah. You wanna get an arbor band with a mandrel and you wanna use it on a, I, I prefer the fine or the medium mm -hmm. um, grit and do it on a nice low speed. If your drill, if you turn your drill on and, and your drill starting off is <laughs> If you can't turn it down, get a new drill. And when you're filing, don't leave your drill in one spot for too long. You wanna continuously move. Mm -hmm. And the closer you get to the natural nail plate, the lighter your pressure is going to be. Mm -hmm. I Anything agree. you wanna add? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things I used to do when I was practicing with an e-file is I used to put a whole bunch of product on my nail, lumpy, bumpy, whatever, and I would just practice filing it down slowly, mm -hmm. like you said, at a low speed, and it gives you the opportunity to not touch the natural nail, but also get the experience of just filing off product on yep. a finger. Pressure. It's yep. all about pressure. Yep. Light pressure. Yeah. Let the machine do the work for you. Yeah. Here's a great question, and this is by... I can't pronounce that. Vidi Shaw 17. Yeah, great job. Yeah, okay. Vidi Shaw. Is there a breathing, cooling period for your nails when you can apply <laughs> acrylic or gel for a few Another months? Another good question. <laughs> yes. Or can you have acrylic or gel applied all 365 days of the year? Well. I've had a client once where I was doing her nails for 31 years. She had them on 10 years prior to that. Mm -hmm. Never did she miss a day. Yep. She had them 365 days for 41 years. So there's never a problem unless there's a problem with the acrylic. And that is a skilled nail technician will be able to take up everything that needs to be taken up if needed. If there's no problems, then you can keep filling those nails. There's, there's no problems. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I've had gel on my nails consistently for 
the whole time I've been a nail technician, maybe yeah. even longer. I've had them on for 32 years, but there was an eight-month period where I took them off before all this information was so readily available. I wanted to see how my nails were going to be. Mm -hmm. So I took them off, and I left it for eight months, and I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to put them back on. <laughs> my nail plates were as, as healthy as ever. Once you go nails, any. you can't go back. That's right. <laughs> Here's a great question. Gracie Pie 01. You both are pros at different mediums. Mm. What are some of the upsides of the other that you like? It's a great question. Mm -hmm. I will have to, can I just start with yeah, that? Yeah, go for it. I am an acrylic freak. And I will be honest, I was a gel snob because when it came out in the 80s, it was brittle, it was flaky, it was yellowy. I really hated it. It was bad. And then the 90s, they kind of revived themselves and they came back out and it was actually pretty good. But I never really visited it because I was such an acrylic snob. Mm -hmm. But I have been playing with it a lot lately. And yeah. I absolutely love it. The clarity, the when you put it on and you just watch it work for you, acrylic doesn't do that. Yep. you got to really work acrylic. Yep. But I, I, that's what I'm loving about it right now. I'm really having a lot of fun doing it. So for me, that's the upside, the clarity and watching it work for you. Mm -hmm. Do you that's like good. acrylic? I, I showed you acrylic. So she don't like it. Time, I can tell by that pause. No, 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 no. Last time I was here, I actually did an acrylic nail mm -hmm. with you, which was awesome. And a couple of things that I noticed that acrylic can do that gel cannot is one, I would say for people who are just learning how to do nails, sometimes acrylic, I, I mean, I feel like acrylic is easier to file on. It's it's like mm. you can you can load it on there and you can you can take your time filing it down. With gel, I feel like gel's a little bit more finicky if you file too much off or you, you know, don't quite do enough. I don't know. I feel like gel is a little bit more sensitive. Mm. And acrylic, you can do whatever you want. Right. Um the other thing that I love acrylic for one of the main things I love acrylic for is 3D nail art. Roses, bows, yes. you know, little faces mm -hmm. if you want to do 3D stuff. Yeah. There are products that are made in gel mm -hmm. that do that, or there's yeah. ways to mix gel to make kind of a putty that you can make 3D nail art out yeah. of. But all of the art I've seen mm -hmm. that is just so beautiful yeah. is acrylic. Yeah. Yeah, you know? no, I agree with you there. The acrylic 3D, <laughs> I just think it's is gorgeous. It's great, though, how we can find the beauty in each other's side of it. Yeah. And I think for competitions, acrylic is amazing, too. It's so fast, you know? Yes. Doing pink and whites and gel is no joke. Yeah. No, you're you're absolutely right. So what do we have next? K Penny 2017 says, Susie and Liz, you're both fabulous. Can one or both of you touch on the proper Aww. way of sculpting and hand filing a nail? I can never get that perfect dolphin nose. The dolphin nose. Wait, so yeah. what's the dolphin nose? Well, I kind of refer to it as when you're doing an almond, um, mm. it comes into you like that. Oh, like it is a, like a dolphin yeah, nose. It is, yeah, it is. It just does that nice swoop. Yeah, it just comes right down into I like a that. Yeah. That's a cool That's a cool way to describe it. Mm -hmm. So for me, you mm -hmm. got a file. Yep. I take it and you literally look down the barrel of that mm -hmm. nail and literally just sculpt it like that. Yes. So you can see it coming towards you. You can do it sideways, but the, this is the best angle yep. is to just to scoop it down. Make sure your file is on an angle where you're scooping it down. Yeah, that's Did exactly the anything? same thing with gel. Yeah. I call it the bullet. Ah, like, okay. Bullet yeah. like that. We but, have our own little. Yeah. I got lots of yeah. little phrases. Absolutely the same. Use. And you can do that after you e-file too. So if you like to e-file, I usually will take a hand file at the very end and just do... Straight right down, yes. yeah, just gotcha. to refine yeah, that little to, lip. You can't really do it as well with it. I have file. never been able to. Yeah, you got to do it with yep. the file. So Trin Girl 9 says, mm -hmm. tips on encapsulating glitter without the nail getting super thick. Mm. Yeah. You know, I can I go ahead? Yes. I think for me, it's making sure the design layer is nice and thick. Thin. So when you put your clear capping on, you have it for strength and you won't file through it. You have a lot of room there. So mm -hmm. make that base layer very, very thin. Mm -hmm. And when working with gel, I actually mix my glitter with my gel. A lot of people will do a dry glitter layer and try and sandwich it in between, which is really right. hard to get it smooth. Yes. So I actually mix my glitter in with my gel and then it becomes kind of like when you're doing acrylic where you have that art layer and then you yeah. encapsulate it with clear and That's it's all great nice and tip. smooth. That's a good tip for me because I'm really learning a lot about mm -hmm. gel. So Izzy XYV Runo says, how many years have you been doing nails, including and not including acrylic? <laughs> so for me, it's been 32 years I've been doing nails. How about you? Is this like, prof it's professionally? Yeah. yeah so assume, six, yeah. it's almost six now. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never really done acrylic, so it's no, without so acrylic. No, so she's, yeah, you're full on gel. Here's a cute one. Michelle Gale says, hi, Susie, is that your daughter? 
Aww. When did you start doing nails as a profession? And when do we get to see Cameraman? And how do you keep your hands so pretty? Aww. Beautiful, she says. That's Isn't a nice that cute? One. Uh, lotion? Mm-hmm. Genetics? Yeah. I, I play no part in that. And Cameraman? No. <laughs> that comes from Cameraman. Not if I have my say. Oh, he speaks, though. I do sometimes. When did you start your nail profession? I started in 85, 86. What about you? 2012. Wow. Yeah, 2012. Awesome. But I would be honored to have Susie as my mom. Although I oh, love yes. my mom dearly. I'm sorry. Someone asked us that mom, question. Mom, I love you. You're number one in my heart. But Susie is really cool. They asked us that question in our live. And I would absolutely I was take giggling Susie as my mom. Because I realized that I am old enough to be her but mom. But I don't feel, I'm a very old soul. So that thought never crosses yeah, we're, my we're mind. We're very, we're colleagues. And we yes. really click on that uh, professional, emotional level. And we so, talk all day. Um, we were talking till 10 o'clock yeah, at night last night. We had I didn't to even let realize. each other go. We just yes. had to stop talking. Yeah. Oh, okay. This brings us to the end, and I've saved. Oh, no, the end. I can't say the best question for last, but I'm going to say it's the most interesting. Okay. Liz has not heard this. So this is for us. Oh. From a dear friend. Oh. <laughs> Selena so. Ryden says, if a client shows up and she wants to get penis nails, what, what would you do? When and where do you draw the line on clients' requests, and how do you say no and explain why in the best way without offending the client? Which is a very good point. Miss you guys. Drink some tea for me. Oh, my goodness. That's a good question. That is a really good question. Um, I have not practiced the penis nail, and I don't foresee it in my future. Is it is it one on top, or is the nail a shape, like the whole nail is... I'm kind of conservative when it comes to things, <laughs> so I haven't really seen a lot of this. I try to stay away from a lot of that controversy. And to stuff. each his own, as, you know, if you want to do that kind of art. For me, I'm not really into a 3D kind of nail. Mm-hmm. I don't even go in for, like, the giant 3D flowers. Mm. And I love them. They're beautiful. Yeah. But I like more of a inset and inlay. Encapsulated. Yeah, and sort yeah. of a smooth. Like, I still want to maintain that shape of the nail. The I like the nails. design to be all inside of it. I like that, yeah. So for me, it's not going to be in my future, but... Mm-hmm. If a client wanted it, I would probably just say, oh, you know, like an art. I mean, you don't walk into an art store and say, um, you know, uh, the paintings you do here are wonderful, but I'd like to see something in a watercolor and you're staring at oils. Right. They don't do Or asking watercolor. Picasso to do a war hall. I mean, yeah. it just it doesn't, doesn't work. work that way. So for me, I would just say, oh, you know, <laughs> that's adorable, but it's not for me. This is my style. And Yeah, I agree. I think that's a very diplomatic way to approach it. I also think that what you put out is usually what you attract. So if you always post pictures and promote the stuff that you actually like to do, very rarely you're going to get confronted with someone coming to you for something completely opposite because they already kind of get the sense that you're a specific type of nail artist. It's very true. I mean, if you want to be known for French and you do French well, do it on your own nails Mm -hmm. and your clients and you'll attract more of those clients and you'll do more of that kind of work and then it will get out there. Who does that beautiful French or ombre or whatever it is that you're doing? And then the client will definitely be drawn to you for that expertise. So if you're doing those uh, different kind of out there kind of nails, Mm -hmm. which I can say in my opinion, I don't think you can really build a clientele on that kind of a fatty, trendy nail, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I think a lot of work goes into it. I think it's very creative, but yeah. I think it's kind of clickbaity. It's, sure. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, wow, 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 look at this. And mm-hmm. it's, I agree, it's maybe not something that mm-hmm. you're going to do And having said that, I do tell my students when they're trying to get out there in social media to do something crazy on your nails. Do something fun. Do something that catches the eye. Um, That may not be my recommendation to do a body part. Yeah, maybe not something (laughs) your grandmother is going to blush when she sees your nails. You know, to each his own. We don't want (laughs) to judge anybody. But for me in particular, it's not for me. And I would just explain that to my clients, not myself. Yeah, I'm wearing a turtleneck. I'm super conservative. (laughs) We're drinking Covered. tea. <laughs> We're drinking tea with nothing in it. Yeah, and tea. I finished my tea, but I think we should do a little honorary we cheers. We should do a little <laughs> to our buddy. Cheers. We miss you, Selena. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Liz. This was great fun. I think we'll be doing this again. Maybe we'll add Selena next time when I she comes so. up. Yeah, we miss her. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.